School of Management Studies IGNU presents an audio book on the course MMPC 007 Business Communication for MBA program. Block 3 Written Communication at Work Unit 11 Long Business Correspondence Part 1 In Part 1 we will discuss Introduction Concept of a report Types of business reports Characteristic of a good report Preparing the report Organization of report Components of letter, text combination, forms of reports Let's listen to Part 1 Unit 11 Long Business Correspondence After studying this unit, you will be able to understand first, understand how to draft business reports second, understand how to draft effective business proposals third, differentiate between a business report and a business proposal Introduction Every business operates in dynamic market conditions and the market forces are very versatile and these things impact the functioning of the business. This is the reason why every organization frequently takes an effort to understand the market forces. At the same time, every organization is affected by internal forces like less productivity of the employees or high attrition rates. All these forces have to be analyzed and then they have to be effectively presented in the form of reports. The business reports address all the internal and external causes which the business may be facing. The reports have specific formats and specific styles of presentation so that it is easy for all the readers to comprehend. The business reports are very substantial as they do impact the decision making of the organizations. Every organization needs to expand its business and the information about new products and services have to be communicated to all the customers and business proposals have become important tools of connection with the customers. All the nuances of business reports and business proposals have been covered in this unit. Concept of a report Report is a formal document which scientifically describes any new phenomena, new observation and insights and presents them in a logical manner in order to deduct important information out of it. Different types of reports are prepared all over the year in every organization. The frequency of reports may differ as per the nature and needs and systems of an organization. Some reports may be prepared daily, some reports may be presented weekly or even once in a month, twice in a year, etc. For example, a territory sales officer has to prepare a monthly sales target report and send it to his or her regional sales manager mentioning the sales volume of each and every product of his or her organization in his or her territory or region. Thus, she or he also mentions the sales of the products which could achieve the target and also the product which could not achieve the target with reasons as well. A publication firm interested in introducing into the market a new series of books can ask for a report on the latest preferences about the readers. The board of directors of the firm could definitely like to get a report on the lower productivity of an organization and the future plans and vision. 
Importance of Reports Decisions cannot be taken randomly in any organization. Every decision has a small term and long term consequences and it involves cost. Thus, reports play a crucial role in orienting the decision making in an organization. The findings of the report create a logical base so that the right decisions can be taken at the right time. The decisions can be taken at an area level, state level or at country level and even at the international level as the reports act as substantial benchmarks in the decision making process. Types of Business Reports On the basis of legal formalities and official protocols which have to be adhered to, we can classify reports into two types. First, informal reports. Second, formal reports. Informal reports An informal report may not be specifically prepared as per the rules and permanent obligations and protocols of the organization. These reports do not have a fixed format and these reports are usually shorter in length as compared to formal reports. Trip reports, email, conference reports, memos are usually some examples of these reports. Formal reports a report that is prepared as per the set protocols, formats and as per the rules and regulations of the organization are generally the formal reports. Formal reports can be statutory or non-statutory. A report prepared and presented as per the rules and regulations as per the requirement of any law comes under the purview of statutory report. The Executive Director's Report at the Annual General Meeting, Annual Return Reports and Auditor's Report are some of the examples of statutory reports. Non-statutory reports are prepared to assist the top management of the organization and facilitate them in the decision-making process, but these reports do not fall under any law. For example, Report of any committee to the top management, report of any individual executive, officer, manager to the organization, etc. On the basis of the frequency of the issue, a report can be periodic or special. First, periodic or routine reports. These reports are drafted as per specific frequencies of time. They may be drafted hourly, daily, weekly, monthly or once in a year. For example, an HR manager may send a monthly report to the management about the job attrition rate of the organization. She or he will report the new recruits as well as those employees who have left the organization mentioning the reasons. She or he will also assess the attrition rate whether it is decreasing or increasing. Second, special reports. These reports are drafted on special requests or needs of the organization. They target every specific and focused areas. For example, the decline in the sales of X dolls in Japan. The report investigated the reasons behind the drop in the sales. Some reasons like the physical attributes of the doll did not match with Japanese women per se. X dolls portray physical attributes more of American girls like tall height, sharp features and broad eyes. Japanese girls did not identify with the structure of the doll as their physical attributes are different from those of American girls. As per the facts revealed by the report, the physical attributes of the doll were modified resembling that of Japanese girls. The modified doll was then relaunched in the Japanese market. Characteristics of a good report 
each report should have some features which make it a good or bad report the characteristics are listed and explained below first precision precision means to be laser focused and only present those facts in the report which are relevant this means the writer has to be very clear about the purpose of the report the findings in the report should pinpoint the exact issue or the purpose of the report precision provides a type of cohesiveness to the report second accuracy of facts the reliability of the report lies in its accuracy any fake information can ruin the decision making process of the organization genuine authentic reports are vital as many a time financial decisions are also based upon the findings of the reports third relevance during the course of report preparation the researcher comes across information which may not be relevant as per the subject of the report some writers are very tempted to mention all the report findings even the irrelevant ones as they feel that it would make a detailed report mentioning irrelevant findings confuse the readers and also result in loss of their precious time the report must include relevant and useful matters only fourth reader orientation the report should be made in alignment with the taste preferences of the readers the purpose of the report will be incomplete if the readers are not able to connect to the report fifth objectivity of recommendations prejudiced thought process biased approach and preoccupied thoughts will tarnish the sanctity of the report the recommendations should be free from all these things and should maintain an unbiased tone sixth simple and comprehensible language clarity simplicity and readability are key characteristics of a report it is a kind of scientific document which is pragmatic in nature seventh clarity ambiguous reports are of no use the tone of the report must be clear and comprehensible the reports should not have long paragraphs and should have well articulated short paragraphs with titles which will make the report more comprehensible to the readers eight brevity a report should be brief and crisp but it should not compromise in its expression if the report is addressing any in depth analysis of something then the proper expression has to be respected one must always do an analysis of the content which can be included or removed from the report brevity has to be respected for effective reporting ninth grammatical accuracy grammatical competence is one of the basic requisites of a good report grammatical errors not only degrade the image of the writer but also degrade the image of the organization a complete check up on the sentence composition proper use of articles punctuations should be there we can say that a good report should be first precise and brief second accurate third relevant fourth reader oriented fifth objective sixth clear and unambiguous preparing the report let us now explore the logical flow in which the report preparation should be approached the methodical way while preparing the report saves time and efforts and focuses the attention of the writer in the right way the following steps can be beneficial while preparing a report first identify the source of information second take notes third meticulous analysis of the data fourth prepare an outline fifth draft the report
Identifying the sources of information. Content is distributed in journals, magazines, reports and in many other sources. Due to the scarcity of time, the researcher cannot go through all the sources of information. She or he has to apply his or her mind and filter out the irrelevant sources of information. She or he has to pick those sources that can give accurate, speedy and relevant information. For example, if an organization is frequently receiving complaints about its poor services from the customers, the ideal way to collect the data here could be identifying those customers and having face-to-face -face conversations or interviews with them. On the other hand, if the need of the report is to study the audience at a large scale, then the source of collecting the data has to be different. For example, if a bank needs to study the emotional quotient of all of its employees in a country like India, then in this case, questionnaire will be a good source of collecting the information. The questionnaire will be thus distributed to few employees to different branches of banks located in North, South or Eastern or Western India so as to gather maximum information. Taking Notes In the course of report making, the writer has to keep on taking notes so that any type of vital information should not be missed. Taking notes actually helps the writer to visualize which type of content is relevant or which type of content has to be rejected. Taking notes also helps in giving a methodical approach to report writing. In addition to it, proper details are not missed as this may be very important for decision making in the future. Analyzing the data this is a crucial part of the report writing process. Right tools of analysis have to be used. Today, with the help of various statistical tools, the data can be logically analyzed, but the writer of the report should have the awareness and understanding to choose the right tools for analysis and interpret it correctly. Making an outline once the blueprint of the report has taken shape in the writer's mind, the writer can systematically infer the flow and tone in which the report work has to be drafted. She or he can logically deduce the priority of the information to be presented first or last, the flow of the parts, subparts of the reports, etc. Writing the report The rough draft should be revised and polished by and again, the writer should also be careful that the language of the report is simple, free from grammatical errors and should contain relevant facts with authentic data. Organization of a report There are three ways in which a report can be organized. These are, first, Letter form. Second, memorandum form. Third, letter text combination form. Letter form. In the letter form of report writing, the title, date, address, salutation, the body, complimentary close, and signature are all mentioned. The body of the letter can be further divided into the following parts. First, introduction. What is the purpose of the report? Why is the report needed? What is the problem area in hand? The answers to all these questions should be covered in the introduction part. Second, findings. The next few paragraphs present the findings of the investigation. Third, recommendations. This is the most vital part of the report as it gives a bird's eye view about the suggestions and recommendations which are to be incorporated in the near future. This part can orient the readers of the report to take important decisions as well as this section of the report gives new pieces of information and insights and directly address the nature of the problem. 
Memorandum form. The simplest way to draft a report is the memorandum style of writing. The date is mentioned at the top. It is followed by the name of the person to whom the report is addressed, the name of the writer, and the subject of the report. Large business houses have different types of printed forms to send reports. This simplifies the procedure and ensures a uniform style. Letter text combination form. Long reports are usually written in the letter text combination form. A complete report in this form includes three major parts and these are first, introductory parts, second, body of the report, third, addenda. It is not essential that a report contains all these parts. Long reports containing most of these parts are generally submitted in book form. Components of letter text combination form of reports. Let us now discuss different components of the letter text combination form of reports. The complete outline of such a report is as follows. First, introductory parts. Within introductory parts, there are different subparts. First, letter of transmittal or letter of presentation. Second, title page. Third, table of contents. Fourth, list of illustrations. Fifth, abstract and or summary. Second, body of the report. Within body of the report, there are subparts. First, introduction. Second, discussion or description. Third, conclusion. Fourth, recommendations. Third, addenda. Within addenda, there are various subparts. First, list of references. Second, bibliography. Third, glossary. Fourth, appendices. Fifth, index. Introductory parts. Letter of transmitter or letter of presentation. A letter of transmittal is a formal letter written to transmit the report from the writer to the reader. It includes details like first, providing a permanent record of transfer, second, highlighting the date on which the report was submitted, third, mentioning the name and position of the writer of the report, fourth, stating when and by whom the report was authorized. A letter of presentation is slightly different from a letter of transmittal. In addition to giving the information contained in the letter of transmittal, it usually states the purpose and scope of the report and refers to the writer's sources of information and highlights special features. Title page The title page gives the title or heading of the report, the persons to whom it is submitted, the date of submission and the name of the writer or writers. Table of contents in the case of long reports, it is advisable to give the table of contents in the beginning. The benefit of giving the table of contents is that it helps in locating the desired content which the reader wishes to read. The table of contents gives the title and the page number of each chapter. List of illustrations The illustrations are usually given after the table of contents. The list gives the number title of the illustrations being mentioned in the report. Abstract or summary. In the case of long reports, it is advisable to give an abstract or summary of the report for a quick reference. An abstract is also called a synopsis. An abstract tells about the exact nature of the report, the finding of the report in short. There are no hard and fast rules regarding the ideal length of the abstract. Body of the report Introduction The introduction is the first part of the body of the report. It includes the following items of information. First, authorization for the report. Second, 
theoretical and technical backgrounds. Third, scope of study with a clear description of the limitations. Fourth, methods of collecting data and mention of primary and secondary sources of data. Fifth, definitions of special terms if needed. Discussion or description. This is the main part of the report. It presents in a very logical way the various aspects of the issue under headings and subheadings. It may include excerpts from other published reports along with charts, graphs, statistical tables. Conclusion and Recommendations On the basis of the facts and data presented under the heading findings, the writer infers definite conclusions. This is the most important part of the report as here the crux of the report is mentioned. The recommendations mentioned here are of key importance because they will help the management in channelizing their future course of action. Addenda List of references The works cited in the text are either credited in footnotes on the page on which they are cited or mentioned together in the list of references. Some writers also mention the references in the footnotes if the number of search references is not too much. On the other hand, if the number of the references is more than they should be presented at the end. Bibliography It includes the work reviewed by the writer and is given in the bibliography. Glossary Glossary section includes the meanings of all the technical terms being used in the report. It is not easy for everybody to understand the meaning of all the technical financial terminologies mentioned in the report. If the report is made for seasoned professionals, glossary section may be skipped as they are already acquainted with the meanings of the technical terms. Appendices Statistical data Charts and diagrams that are not included in the main body of the report for maintaining the smooth, uninterrupted flow of the report. They are put at the end in the form of appendices. Index In case of lengthy reports, an index of the contents of the report may be included. Signature A report must be dated and signed by the person or persons who has or have made it. Somebody has to take the accountability of signing the report. As for signing, the report makes you responsible for the authenticity of the content which has been mentioned in the report. You are listening to audiobook by School of Management Studies IGNO for MBA program. Course code MMPC 007 Business Communication Block 3 Written Communication at Work Unit 11 Long Business Correspondence Part 1 Course Coordinator Professor Neeti Agrawal from School of Management Studies IGNO Voice Over by Santosh Bharti Edited by Taranam Jaha Program assisted by Jagbandhu Jana and program produced by Manoj Kumar Singh. This program was brought to you by Electronic Media Production Center of Indira Gandhi National Open University.